So, all right. Um, we are pleased um, to be here to present a little bit what we do, uh, a part of what we do at Camp to Camp. Uh, first of all, uh, we will do a small presentation. We'll present a little bit uh, the speakers. So, my name is uh, Mathieu Borneau. I'm a system and software engineer uh, in the Lausanne area. I'm a bit um, automation obsessed. Uh, and now I'm currently leading the infrastructure uh, solution department uh, at Camp2Camp. Camp. All right, so my name is François Pierra. I'm a system and network engineer as well. Uh, I'm usually reluctant to try to type the same command twice, so I tend to write code instead. Um, I provide consulting services with my company, Nimag Networks, and I've been working with uh, the folks at Camp2Camp Camp for many years now. Uh, okay, so for the agenda of this talk, so first we're going to give you a bit of context on which type of solution uh, Camp2Camp Camp is providing, uh, why we think that automation is a very important topic, and uh, why we finally decided to build our own uh, pr uh, on-site private cloud. And then we will give you a few uh, use cases on why automation is very nice and then a few conclusions. Okay, so about the context. So Camp2Camp is mainly uh, developing um, geospatial and business solution uh, based on a lot of open source uh, software and services. Um, so we need to provide a, a kind of standard platform to deploy our solution. And this is not very easy because we have uh, to deploy this platform in different uh, infrastructure. Uh, the best case is a cloud provider, uh, our private cloud, but we have also to deploy sometimes uh, our solution to virtual infrastructure and sometimes uh, on bare metal uh, machines. So um, we need also uh, this flexibility to be able to deploy this solution and to, uh, uh, to have a solution for the customers. And it should be scalable uh, if possible. And uh, the deployment in some is the deployment as a management is sometimes made by us, but sometimes also by the customers. So the, the goal, um, the ob objective we have at Camp to Camp was to develop a kind of toolbox uh, based on Puppet to develop uh, different uh, uh, models uh, of server. Uh, so we are now able to uh, uh, construct, to build uh, different ar architecture in different contexts. So um, for us, the most important is not uh, really the, the, the infrastructure. We, we have a kind of abstraction, but to have a, a toolbox of module to reuse uh, as much as possible uh, the different component at, and to have uh, a kind of uh, same workflow to develop uh, all this module for all these customers. We are actually, uh, we are currently managing uh, hundreds of uh, machines in different cloud provider, our private cloud, or, but also in, uh, open, you know, in uh, other OpenStack, in Rackspace, uh, whatever. All right, so uh, why does automation really make sense? So. Uh, I think that's that's a very good way to be able to share uh, working knowledge of your systems between uh, members of the same team. So that means that is, instead of having outdated documentation and so on, you have working codes that you can reuse across multiple projects and uh, that can be better tested and better developed. So um, this is really important. Uh, it's decreased the the amount of manual configuration you have to do as well, so it's uh, lower the number of mistakes that you can do. Uh, but when you do mistakes, it's bigger mistakes, so that's the trade-off. <laughs> uh, it really fits uh, all of the DevOps uh, philosophy, I would say, so uh, trying to bridge the gap between developers and uh, sysadmins, so they can work together to ensure that the system are really working well and scalable and so on. And it's a very good way to do change management because it's, it's done by itself when everything is uh, automated. 
So why did we decide to build a private cloud? So um, I think that one of the first benefit was to keep control on the full stack. So uh, we have been uh, installing servers for Linux servers mostly for many, many years. And uh, if you build the cloud yourself uh, when you have some issue, performance issue, for instance, or things like that, you can go and dig deeper inside the stack so you can know what's going on. Um, data locality and sovereignty is very important as well because uh, just for a matter of latency and bandwidth, for instance, uh, uh, if you have the, the data located in the same uh, local area network, for instance, you get much better uh, throughput. Uh, it's also useful for uh, internal services such as DHCP, DNS, internal wikis, build system, and so on. So. I think that the, the locality of cloud computing is something which is very interesting and we, I would probably disagree with the first speaker on this point, but uh, I think that being able to distribute your application the closer to the user, uh, something that Amazon won't be able to do. I mean, uh, I don't think that Amazon will probably uh, come to your LAN. So this is probably something which is uh, interesting for private cloud. Um, it gives your customers some choice as well. You can, you can choose between the privacy of your own systems uh, versus the, the capacity and elasticity that you can get from uh, big cloud providers. And uh, it can be cost effective as well because you can leverage all the existing investments you have in infrastructure such as data centers, servers, uh, network equipment, and so on. Um, the last benefit I would say from a uh, camp to camp point of view is that uh, having a private cloud uh, forces the development teams to be able to deploy their application on different platforms, like an OpenStack cloud, like AWS, and so on. So it helps um, developers avoid using some uh, Amazon specific features, for instance. Okay, so uh, on the technical side, uh, we decided to, to use OpenStack. We've started with the Havana release two years ago. And uh, we are currently running Ice House, which is a bit older, but not too much. Um, all the deployment is done with Foreman, which handles the bare metal installation of all the servers. And uh, all the configuration is managed by Puppet. So we're using a bunch of community modules uh, that are available. Um, we have uh, 30 plus physical servers, and we are using Ceph for volumes and object storage. We are using uh, local storage on uh, red arrays as well, because for, for some legacy uh, issues. Um, the only uh, pain point with <laughs> OpenStack is upgrades. This is something, this is what it looks like sometimes, but yeah, it's, it's, getting, it's getting better each release, but uh, because we started early, this, is a, this was a huge pain. Okay, so uh, this is the first use case um, about Puppet. So uh, some years ago, uh, almost in the beginning of the Puppet project, we decided came to come to rewrite everything in, uh, with this uh, configuration management system. Um, so, in the beginning of the project, the, the development of modules was a bit uh, tricky. It was difficult to build uh, nice modules and uh, split the, the logic part and the data part. So, we have a lot of difficulty to share this work with other contributors. And uh, we discussed this point uh, in different events like uh, Pep and Camp, uh, DevOps Day, to to find solution, to, to be able to share and to contribute to the same collection of modules. Um, with the time and the new uh, release of Puppet, this capacity to build uh, nice modules is here. And now we are uh, generalized the, the, the test, unit test and acceptance test inside our module. We also automate the process to um, upload our modules to the Forge. Uh, and now uh, the result is uh, we are one of the most, uh, one of the top contributors in, on the, in the Puppet Forge. 
So just an example of uh, one of the most, one of the popular modules we, uh, we are working, working on. So you can see that this uh, OpenLDAP module is now approved. Uh, this is just, just a manner to say this module is well designed and uh, uh, respect some quality criteria. Um, it is also to say to a new uh, Puppet user, hey, before uh, starting a new open, open LDAP module, perhaps you have to see uh, this one and to, sh to uh, understand this one and try to contribute to this module uh, rather than uh, reinventing the wheel. It was a big problem in the past in the Puppet community to have tens um, open LDAP modules but now it's better with, uh, with, uh, with the Forge. So if you click, you click for example, in this on this module, you will see uh, an information, perhaps you already know this, uh, this Forge, but perhaps. Uh, and you have a lot of details, a lot of information. You have a quality score, you have community rating, uh, and you have different information regarding uh, compatibility, uh, how to install this module, uh, the doc documentation. So this is pretty complete and uh, very useful for a new uh, Puppet user. And at the bottom uh, of the page, you can see the small build passing picture, picture. And behind this small picture, you have a Travis matrix with all the tests. So in the first part, uh, we have the test about Puppet version, Ruby version. And the most inter interesting part in the bottom is about uh, testing, really testing the code inside a different operating system. So for now, it's not possible on, in Travis to choose your oper operating system. So we are now uh, launching uh, instances inside our private cloud to do this part. So if I click to have the detail of this uh, job, specific job regarding Debian uh, 8, I have a log, a log file, and uh, the first part described uh, that explained that uh, Travis is starting a new worker to do the job, to do the test, and after the, the project uh, is uh, get with Git, Git clone, after we have the provision part of the instance in, in our private OpenStack, and then uh, we can install the Puppet agent, uh, apply the different uh, OpenLDAP recipes and, the, and finally, uh, run two tests, two acceptance tests, just to be sure that the SLAPD service is listening on the standard uh, LDAP ports. So this is just a simple example, but you can write a lot of things with uh, this acceptance test. So this is a corresponding uh, source code. Uh, it used uh, server spec. And with server spec, you can check, for example, that you have a user, a file with a, a certain rights, you have a package installed, a service running, whatever. So this is a, a, a very a, a big value uh, inside the module. OK, so um, the most benefits uh, we have uh, with this uh, uh, continuous integration is now we have a real uh, uh, behavior test and behavior driven uh, development. Uh, it's pluggable inside a more general um, delivery pipe, continuous delivery pipeline. It, was, it is also, also very useful for us because we have a lot of contribu contributors, external contributors, and it's not so easy to test uh, all the new feature and the non-regression uh, uh, tests. Uh, it is also very useful for testing different this module in different platform, different distribution, uh, because in the past it was so boring to bootstrap new Vagrant boxes and check all, check all the recipes. So now it is completely automated, and uh, we have now more confidence uh, as a red, as a result. So. Okay, so for the, the second use case that we want to show you, uh, this is an example of a, a free and open source software called Terraform, uh, which is basically a cloud uh, management system. Um, the goal here is to show you when you have a private or public cloud or any type of cloud, uh, how you can actually deploy workload on it. 
So uh, Terraform is, uh, is a piece of software made by the same people that made Vagrant, if you know it already. Uh, it's basically infrastructure as code, to, just like uh, the regular configuration management tool that you probably know, such as Puppet, Chef, and so on. But it sits one layer above. So instead of managing packages, users, and so on, everything in single server, you manage servers, networks, DNS records, uh, uh, IP addresses, and so on. So it's really one layer uh, above. Uh, it provides a simple uh, file-based configuration language, which is based on JSON, but a bit more human-readable, which is not bad. And one of the main features it has is idem potency. So idem potency means that you can run the same recipe again and again, and it won't have any side effects, except if your infrastructure has changed. So it will, you just declare the type of server that you want, and if the infrastructure correctly match your description, it won't do anything. And if it doesn't, then it will bring it back in sync with what's uh, in the configuration. So I think that's a very, that's a new project, but it's very interesting. So we're going to do a bit of a demo. Let's hope that the demo gods are with us. <laughs> so this is what uh, the, this is the, the OpenStack dashboard. Uh, so you can see that it's pretty empty for now. We just have a public network. So um, I already run quite a bit uh, of the initial setup of the infrastructure, so we won't lose too much time. So this is how I did it, just Terraform apply. I have already written, all the code is available on GitHub. I can sh give you the link afterwards. But uh, it has deployed a typical uh, multi-tier web application uh, inside this cloud. Uh, I could have done that with AWS or any other platform. It doesn't matter. So now the interesting part is that I'm going to show you how we can make changes to this infrastructure. Because we have many tools available that can pro uh, provision new projects. But it's always more difficult to manage changes to existing infrastructure. And that's where, uh, in my opinion, Terraform really shines. Okay, so ready for live demo? All right. Can you still hear me? Yeah. OK, so we can see on the left that the platform is actually deployed. And then I'm going to do, well, this is the main file that we are using. And I'm just going to show you one particular example of it. So that's uh, how you describe the load balancer instance. So you can say, well, the name of the instance, which image it should be based on, uh, which network it should be connected to the size of the VM and so on. So what I'm going to do is do some changes OK, so I'm going to do two changes to the infrastructure. So one is uh, decrease the number of application server. You can see that there are five of them currently. And uh, I will add an additional DB server, for instance. So uh, this is what the diff looks like. And then I can call Terraform apply, which will, which will hopefully do the life changing on our setup on the left. Perfect. So this is really uh, changing the, the, the actual uh, setup with a simple uh, configuration change here. And the interesting part is that uh, now you can choose to output. This is a wonderful website which is hosted on, on many, many servers. So what's interesting is that I can rerun that. and. Because no change has been made, it shouldn't do any change. Uh, there's a small bug for a secu security group, but it's an open bug, so it's going to be fixed. So now it hasn't changed anything to the infra 
because everything was in sync with, with uh, what was described in the file. And then we can, we can destroy everything when we're finished, but that's probably something we, you won't do on a live system. So that's it for the demo. Okay, so um, the last slide as, as a conclusion. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to say we, we, we tame the cloud because the cloud is a buzzword, but we find a way to manage uh, resources in the cloud, uh, to manage multiple environments with uh, reusable components. Uh, it, was, uh, it is possible because uh, we use we think we use uh, appropriate tooling. We use a lot of automation. And of also because the, our team, our ops team, uh, embrace a bit the DevOps, DevOps principle um, and change a little bit the, the manner to think because before we were, we were uh, sysadmin and now we are more uh, infrastructure uh, developers. So this is a big change for a lot of people but uh, it's, if, if it works, it is very, very interesting. Of course, you need a lot of time to learn a lot of things, a lot of tools, but we have the chance to have a, a fantastic uh, free and open software um, ecosystem with different tools like Foreman, Puppet, uh, and the OpenStack, and Terraform, and a lot of people around the world are working on very, uh, uh, very good tools. And uh, we are uh, now uh, uh, able to automate not everything, but uh, a big part of what we do at Camp to Camp. And all of this uh, with the great support of a lot of people uh, all around the world from different uh, free and open software communities. So thank you for your attention and don't hesitate if you have uh, any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Short ones? And I suppose you will be outside for yeah. during lunchtime for long discussions. Yes. The mic. Uh, okay, <laughs> we try. Hallo, Sie haben sie noch nicht gesehen. Geht's gut? Ja. Sie, sie haben. So you mentioned uh, it and. Uh, being uh, having missing features compared to Terraform, but as far as I know, if you just quick technical question here, if you do a heat update, it doesn't change the stack, the state of the stack on the OpenStack if you have no update actually uh, to be done. Uh, yeah, I've not uh, read in many details about it, but uh, I read that there was some uh, some trouble with it because it didn't use some some graph just like Puppet does currently. I think so. In some case, it is able to update uh, part of the stack, but in some case, it fails, I guess. So that, that's why I put it there. That, that's one of the points. And the other one was that it's a single provider tool. It works with a single OpenStack tenant, whereas uh, Terraform is able to speak at the same time with AWS and multiple OpenStack tenants, for instance, which is very interesting because then uh, everybody's speaking about hybrid cloud and so on, so that's a good way to be able to deploy uh, some application between multiple clouds at the same time. In my opinion, the most interesting part of Terraform is the capacity to, pl to have a plan because uh, when you want to upgrade your big cloud formation uh, description, sometimes it's, uh, it's very difficult and you have not always the exact idea of what we, you do. And uh, with Terraform plan, you can give the plan to another people to check, to like a pull, re a pull request on GitHub. So it is very interesting to have a kind of 
uh, uh, process, a workflow, and uh, capacity to review the, the change also in the infrastructure. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, so is there, oh, I didn't see. Yeah. Okay, so Hello. I have a more specific question. In your demo, you manually applied the Terraform receipt. Is it also possible to dynamically react to changing loads? Um, no, d not directly, I would say. W what you can do is running Terraform apply uh, like in the loop, like the Puppet agent does, for instance. So uh, each 30 minutes, you just run it. But it's not really made for reacting to increasing load and things like that. I think that Terraform will probably just set up the auto scaling group in Amazon or OpenStack instead of managing it directly. 